Hello and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Light. Amen. You say, why do you call it that? Because we, we, we want to be just like Jesus did. And John 10, 10 says, I, uh, I, Jesus said, I come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. So we call this program the, the Believer's Voice of Life because we want to be a voice for that life that Jesus came to bring. And I'm so glad about it. Uh, this is lesson uh, five on uh, uh, Thanksgiving and praise. And I hope you've been been with us on every broadcast. If not, go back and catch up. Uh, I hope you got your notebooks and your Bibles and sit down here. This is our Bible study time uh, that Cheryl and I uh, come together. And we wanted to broadcast it. We wanted to make a vid videos and share it with you on, on YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, and, and God's opening up opportunities. Uh, it's Friday, so just let me take care of a couple of little business things really quick. Uh, and then we want to go right back in here. It's hard to do that. It's hard for me to stop for business sometimes, but it's necessary. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to make you aware uh, that, uh, that we're available. We're at, if you have a Bible study, if you have a, a church service, if you have a conference, uh, any place where we can teach the Word of God, preach, uh, lay hands on the sick, uh, uh, believe God with you and for you, uh, we want to be there. If, if there's a, an event that you want us to be a part of, you just get in touch with us, P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia, 30125, and you can get in touch with us. Uh, if you also look on YouTube and look on the information uh, there, you can find our, our phone number. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we want to be a part of what God's doing in your life. We, believe God, we know God's called us and anointed us and we want to release that anointing into your life we want to do it through this video we want to do it uh, when we're with you so uh, we are there also uh, Friday is our time that we uh, want to invite you to uh, to share with us uh, and, and help bless us to be able to keep growing in this video uh, uh, broadcast uh, because uh, we have opportunities open up to us and uh, we're researching right now other ways to get the equipment we need and all to go uh, to different to more voices that we can get the word of God out. Now I don't I, don't, I try to share what Holy Ghost says, but I don't try to pick a, a subject where I can just uh, try to go deep. Now some people say I go deep anyhow, uh, but but uh, you know what's deep? Deep is God us coming into relationship with God, us being the people that he created in his image and in his likeness. Don't get me started. Anyhow, uh, so we're in lesson five today. And uh, uh, so we want to keep going there. Uh, did we pray yet? I don't think we did. Let's pray and let's believe God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, please ask him uh, to be the Lord of your life today. Will you, if you need healing, pray with us, believe with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you're the God of our salvation. You gave your blood on Calvary. Uh, you shed your blood. You ro uh, was buried and rose on the third day, ascended back to the Father. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you uh, have made a way for us to be your children, uh, the, the sheep of your pasture. And we thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Again, we are in lesson five. Uh, and, and I'm going to let Cheryl just kind of catch us up and go uh, from there if is that okay we're going to psalms 116 if you have your notebooks and so forth we're going to read verses 17 through 19 and 17 says i will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the lord i will pay my vows unto the lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of the old Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Well, one thing I want to point out is that um, the psalmist that wrote this, he realized that sometimes giving thanksgiving has to be an act of our will. There's sometimes when we feel great and we are remembering all the goodness of God and those things that thanksgiving just naturally flows out of us. But as we talked about in our last um, lesson, that's not always the case. Sometimes we feel lousy yeah. um, or whatever or worried or anxious about something. 
And those are the times when our will has to come into play. It's very similar to forgiveness when someone has hurt us. And some hurts can be extremely deep and difficult. But it's an act of our will to forgive that person Amen. because that's what Jesus taught us to do. So here the psalmist realized, um, and I don't know if David wrote this psalm or not. It doesn't say on my little thing here. Sometimes it does. But we certainly know David wrote many of the psalms and he went through a lot of difficult places. And um, so he certainly knew, and I'm sure the others who wrote the Psalms did too, that there comes a time when you just have to grit your teeth and make up your mind that you're going to offer up the thanksgiving um, and praise to the Lord. And um, the same thing about paying vows unto the Lord. Now in the Old Testament, they actually made vows. They would go to the temple and they would vow something to the Lord, whatever it concerned. And so they would actually physically have something to pay, either yeah. by way of a sacrifice or giving up something or whatever. Um, but it says, I will do it in the presence of all his people. And, you know, we we do need other Christians around us. And um, one of the scriptures says something about um, people of like precious faith. Mm -hmm. And it is very precious to find people of like precious faith. There's people who believe in Jesus, but there's so many doctrinal issues and things that they focus on instead of being of like precious faith. So it's important for us to be around people of like precious faith. And one thing we can do if we find it difficult to find people like that is ask God to bring them into our life. Amen. Because we need that fellowship. You want to pick up from here? Or? Amen. Well, I want to I look just a moment at the, the term sacrifice of thanksgiving uh, and, 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 and tie that in with, with paying our vows. Because I, I see something here. Uh, in, in Psalm 116, verse 17, he says, I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now, when, when he inserted the word I will there, uh, he's making a vow. Uh, he, he's making a commitment now, uh, saying I will uh, offer the sacrifice of, of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Now, in that whole verse there, is a vow unto God. I'm going to make the sacrifice of thanksgiving and I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. I know a lot of people say that uh, sometimes, but then they, they keep going through their daily lives. They keep walking as though they don't know the Lord. You know, some, uh, if somebody's always saying, oh, well, you know, I, I really appreciate you and I, I like being around you and all, but yet I, they see you out on the street and they cross the street to get, to get away from you or, are they, they try to ignore you? You know, there's something wrong with that picture. There's, uh, <laughs> there, there's no thanks, thankfulness about having a relationship with you. Same thing with the Lord. If we, if we vow and say, God, I love you, Lord, and I give you praise, we come into church and we, we sing those songs, uh, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Do, that, do you know that's not just for the church service? That, that uh, actually... Well, that come from the Psalms, and, and, and that was done uh, out in the field uh, with, with nobody else around but the sheep in the pasture when David uh, was doing it. So that's a personal vow unto God. Uh, and he, he says in verse 18, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Now, he made that vow out there in the uh, in the wilderness, out there in the in the, the pastures with the sheep, but he says, in the presence of all that, all, all your people. Can I tell you, some people um, don't walk in victory because they don't pay their vows. Now, what do you mean? Let's look at David. David, uh, the, the the writer here, the day uh, said, uh, I will bring the sacrifice of praise. I will call on the name of the Lord. Uh, and then uh, he says, I'm going to pay, pay my vows in the presence of all the people. And can I tell, let me tell you a manifestation of that. 
Uh, David came out of that field. His, his, his father called him, his dad called him out of that field and gave him, uh, gave him uh, cheeses and gave him uh, uh, food for his brethren and, and, and sent him uh, to the, the camp where Israel was fighting the Philist uh, Philistines. And guess what? Because he had worshipped and gave thanksgiving, brought the sacrifice of praise uh, there in the field in his personal life, uh, that, and he called on the name of the Lord, whenever he went into that camp and Goliath was, was screaming out at all the children of Israel, he could stand up and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Why? Because right now, whenever he needed it, he could pay his vows. I'm going to give thanks unto God and this uncircumcised Philistine is coming down. Uh, verse 19 said, in the courts. Now, well, let me back up. I, uh, he says, I will uh, pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of the Lord. And he says, in the courts of the Lord's house. How? Back to 109 verse, uh, 100, Psalm 100 verse 4. Uh, Cheryl, how does he get into the courts? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. Into the courts with praise. So we're seeing him paying his vows. And he says, in the courts of the Lord's house. How does he know he's going to be in the courts of the Lord's house? Because he's got a praise on his mouth, in his mouth, a praise in his heart. And he enters into the, 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 to the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of, uh, of the, O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. See, right, right there. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he's entered into the courts of uh, of the Lord's house and there is a praise in his mouth. That's why you every day, don't wait till you get to church. Don't wait, uh, you know, some people, we're in a, a state of mind right now with, uh, with the church where people can't make it uh, from Sunday to Sunday. They've quit going on Wednesday, quit Sunday night, they've quit uh, gathering together and once in a while we'll get a revival and get all pumped up. But, uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, you know, uh, it's not up to your preacher to keep you filled with, uh, with praise and worship. Uh, the Word of God is, is every day. Cheryl and I get in the Word of God every day. We find somebody that's got the Word and some life in them uh, that, that will, will speak the Word of God and bring alive what God's writing on our heart. There's a witness from what God's writing on our heart to somebody uh, that, that God's anointed to speak life and to bring us into a place where we can praise and worship God uh, in the midst of Jerusalem or the city of peace. Where is the city of peace? I believe it's the house of God. We are the house of God. Uh, that heavenly Jerusalem, if you will. Uh, and, and, and that's the place where we come in to praise and worship and lift up the name of the Lord thy God. Well, that's what I was thinking about in the midst of thee, right here. Yeah. In the Amen. midst of thee, Amen. old Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the church. We are the city of God. And it's in the midst of us oh, yeah. that Amen. all this good, praise sure. and thanksgiving comes out of us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's Christ in the midst of you. Yes. Amen. So. Uh, right there, I want you to, uh, you know, one, my one prayer as we teach the, these lessons uh, on whatever medium you're watching uh, is for all of us, we're, we're growing in our awareness of what God's uh, doing, of the every moment, every second presence of God that dwells in us, not just, uh, uh, not just when we go to church together, not just when we uh, but but every day, and that's what we want to raise an awareness of, uh, that, that Christ is not just for the church house, it is for the church. We go back and get our lessons uh, on, on uh, 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 Jesus built church because it begins to tell you what the real uh, church is. Go back uh, on, on YouTube and, and on this page and uh, Facebook page or Twitter page, whichever one you're on, and you'll find those lessons. But but, but I want to tell you, uh, God's bringing us into a real awareness of His presence. Now, I, I don't know, uh, I'll I, I just, I just repent right now to the millenniums or the other, the, the other generations. I, I, I'm sorry if you're disappointed 
uh, with us. But we we just come out of a, uh, out of a <clears throat> out of a place in our life. We didn't choose to be the part of the generation we are. But let me tell you something. There's a real relationship with God that we want to pass on to you. Amen. That we want you to have. Not because we want to be religious or lord over you or try to correct you in everything you do. Can I tell you, if you don't have a relationship with God, you don't need anybody following you around to correct you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ walks this walk with you. And I, I want you to know that God, that God that will be there when nobody else will be there, that, that will go with you even unto the end of the end of the world. And I believe that's exactly where he wants to go till there's no more world operating in us, but there's only Christ operating in us, and there's a new man operating in our life. Cheryl, this is... If I could just open up and pour out of my heart, and the only way I have to do it is to open up my mouth. Excuse me. Is to open up my mouth and let the words come out by the inspiration and by, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And, and it's, not my, uh, it's not my intentions to try to condemn another generation or try to condemn another human being, but I, what I want you to do is realize that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. And through that love of God, we want to come into relationship with Him. And there's certain things that, that do, doesn't happen uh, when we're in His presence. When you go into the presence of royalty, whenever you enter the palace, uh, there, there's behaviors that you have to uh, learn. And you, you, you don't go in there with a rebellious spirit. You go in there uh, thankful that you got to enter in uh, to, the, to, to the courts of royalty. And you know what? There's no greater royalty than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, um, Roger sort of addressed the millennials and the younger generations and so forth. Um, God has placed us all. Nobody was an accident. Um, at the time, the place, the position, even the family, um, you know, we can be upset about any of those things. But I'm going to say something here which... Um, <laughs> it's probably for more adult ears, but I have asked the Lord for a long time, why all the sexual things going on? There's, you know, hopping from one to the other. There's perversions in this realm. And I've realized that part of it is because life is difficult and um, people can be very cruel. And people want to feel something good. And so that's kind of an outlet. But it's continued on and on and on to where there's no satisfaction in it. And so we go to something more perverse and more perverse and more perverse, trying to find those good feelings. Well, the thing that we are trying to express to you is that there is no other answer except in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're in our 70s now. And, you know, when you're young, you don't think about being old. <laughs> I never did. I never dreamed about being 70 and all the things that go along with that. But here's the point. We don't want your life to be miserable. Amen. And you're never... Never, never, never going to find satisfaction apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter how many thrills you get, how many big parties you go to, the end result is always going to be a disappointment. It's always going to be dissatisfaction. Then you're going to try to find something else. The only real peace is the King of Peace, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, I just really feel the presence of the Lord right here this moment and, and want to take just a moment to let you uh, pause and let the Lord just begin to deal with you. Now, I don't mean deal with you as far as 
uh, is just bringing conviction or some bad feeling. Uh, actually, conviction is not a bad feeling. Conviction is a, an invitation, right. is a drawing, is yes. an invitation. Uh, when the conviction of the Lord, you know, I remember whenever I was a teenager, they talked about conviction like God's just going to come down and press you and make you feel uh, so. Uh, it wasn't like that with me whenever I was born again. Uh, whenever I began to hear about the love of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, it was a drawing. It was, uh, you know, it was a, conviction was, was an invitation to come out of the, uh, 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 of the, the, uh, place where I was, which was very uh, sad, was very, uh, you know, in, in my family there was, was violence, there was, uh, there was, uh, it was not a good atmosphere, there was alcoholism, there was different, different things going on. Uh, God changed that as we went, as, as the years went along after I got born again, and, and uh, but, but it was an invitation. And that's what God does with the conviction of the Lord. It's not, uh, you know, get right or go to hell. It's come unto me, all you that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you. It's an invitation to let him give you something. And so he said, if you come unto me, I'll give you rest. So uh, out of that rest now, I'm very thankful, Cheryl. There, there's a thanksgiving in my heart and a praise on my mouth. Hallelujah, that God has chosen me, that God brought me out of the things that were uh, oppressing and pushing and, 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 and discouraging me into His marvelous life. So uh, when we pray at the end of the uh, service, we, we, we're, we're going to do we're going to do it. Uh, practice praising and thanksgiving again at the end of the service. Uh, so, anyhow, you got something? Well, you talking about that made me think about John six forty four, where Jesus said, "No man can come unto me except the yeah. Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day." Well, it's like Roger said. I mean, when I grew up in church, I, it came across to me as a child of how mean God was. Yeah. And when I would hear verses like this, it was, it was more like a threat than anything. It's like, if you don't come to Jesus, da-da-da-da-da. But the drawing is, um, it's a precious thing. Think about that. You're talking about the perfect father. And um, this perfect Father has made a plan to bring us out of darkness and out of all these things uh, that create havoc in our life. Amen. And they, He wants to draw us to Jesus because He knows that's the way to a brand new life. Yes. A brand new life. I'm saying a brand new life. Where it is life. It's not something we have to try to work up every day. It's a brand new life, a brand new creation man inside of us. Amen. Sure, I, this is about the third time I've wanted to sing, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. This is the invitation to you. Somebody's feeling that, that, that invitation to come unto Him. Because you're weary, you're tired. And he says, if you'll come into me, I'll give you rest. Amen. Amen. Uh, anything else there? Because we're getting ready to go into Isaiah 35. No, I think that's it. But you might wanna watch. Okay, we're, we're, we're coming close to the end, but we have about uh, three or four more minutes. Uh, maybe a little bit more. So I want to go into, into Isaiah 35. And uh, verse 1 says, The wilderness... Uh, the reason I want to go in, into here because right now uh, we're, we're feeling the, the uh, God inviting us to come into that place of rest, to come into that place where He is, uh, He wants to bring us from sadness to gladness. Okay, <laughs> Amen. I've been I've been sad and I've been glad, and glad is better. Uh, but He says in the first verse of Isaiah 35. He says, the wilderness and the solitary place uh, shall be glad for them. 
and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Now maybe you've been going through a desert place, a dry place, a place where uh, you felt like there's no hope. You couldn't, you couldn't see beyond uh, where you were. But uh, there is, uh, Cheryl, in a relationship with God, uh, whenever we're really in touch with that, now, I, I, I grant you sometimes uh, we, we go through periods, uh, even in our Christian walk, we go through uh, periods, and I don't mean days and weeks, I mean sometimes we go through a, a, a temptations to be, uh, you know, to focus on the dry place rather than the glad place. And uh, uh, focus on the solitary means the, the lonely place, the places uh, where is not, uh, it's not filled with joy, not filled with all those things. It's the wilderness. You know, some of us feel like we were raised in the wilderness. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's the truth. I used to have that testimony. I was raised in the wilderness. But you know what? I'm not a child of the wilderness. I'm a child of the king. And God, as a child of the king, God prepares us and brings us uh, into the palace, brings us into the place where we're glad. We're not living in the, the, the desert. Uh, and if we are, God begins to cause it to blossom as the rose. Uh, amen. If you're going through a dry place, that's the best place to best place to be right now uh, if you're in the desert place because there's where the rose is going to blossom and where you're going to begin to experience the gladness of God uh, in a whole new measure. Well, that's what I was thinking. I used to, I've heard so much stuff about the wilderness um, <laughs> through my Christian walk and it's always been portrayed as this horrible place and oh, you're going through the wilderness and this, that, and the other, but really, it's a good place. Um, actually, one of the meanings of the word wilderness means pasture. It can mean desert. Good. But it's a place where we eat. We learn to eat, mm -hmm. as Roger talked about in an earlier lesson, the eat my flesh, drink my blood. This is where we learn and we get to know God. And... You know what, a solitary place, the scripture says, be still and know that I am God. I, I never anymore look at these things as a terrible place to be. If we would just realize that, you know what, our lives are so super busy all the time. Yeah. People, har families hardly have time to get together. People don't sit down and be quiet. Well, you know what? God is a spirit. We're to worship him in spirit and truth. If we don't sit down and spend time with the truth, going into our spirit and our spirit responding to the spirit of God, sometimes we have to go to the wilderness. If we don't make a place and a time to be still and know that I am God, yeah. then it's going to drive us to the wilderness just because we need to rest. So it's... It's not, I never view it as a bad place anymore. It's a place where God feeds us. It's a place where we can grow. It's a place where we begin to blossom as a rose. Amen. Amen. Well, we're out of time today, but I want to just real quickly before we go off the air, before we pray, uh, I, I just want to invite you uh, to stand with us. We're receiving partners. This is Friday's broadcast. We're receiving partners into this ministry uh, I believe that God has called us to touch the world, and I believe he's calling some of you uh, to stand with us. So uh, uh, right on the YouTube channel, there's information that you can click on there, and it'll give you all the information about how to contact us. Also, on the Facebook page, there's a, uh, there's a link that's going to be there uh, with this that that's, uh, says Tytherly. And if you click on that link, you can go in there, and you can contribute electronically uh, to this ministry. Uh, so we thank you in advance for being obedient to God. Uh, God shall supply all our needs according to His riches mm -hmm. and glory by Christ Jesus. So we stand in that, we, we believe that, and know that God uh, is doing great things. So we're going to come right back to Isaiah 35, 1. So make a note of that. And on lessons, when we come back to Lesson 6, this concludes our Lesson 5, when we come back to Lesson 6, and I think my wife has something else to say. No, time's up. <laughs> okay, she's pointing at the clock. 
Okay, our time is up, and so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, uh, God, for the word of God that dwells in our hearts richly. We thank you, God, that all our dry places, all our desert places, uh, blossom as a rose because you're bringing fresh water of your word there. You're refreshing us. And God, we thank you for your covenant uh, with us and our covenant with you. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we'll be back next week with Lesson 6. Uh, see you then. God bless. <laughs>